Welcome back, everyone. We're fixing to get started with our first session of the day. Just a reminder that you can post questions in Slack as well as in the chat channel. Um, and we'll keep the conversation going. So while they get their slides up, I will get you guys introduced. So the title is LCCN Bot Creating Connections Between the Library of Congress Name Authority File and Wikidata. This presentation is presented by Mary um, Campany, Kelly Davis, Sasha or Sasha Brazil, Crystal Yuragi, um, and they also had Elizabeth Plants help them prepare this, but she won't be helping today. Mary is the authorities metadata librarian at Cornell University, where she is responsible for maintaining authority control in the library catalog. Kelly is a cultural heritage data engineer at Yale's Lux Project, a pioneering cross collections platform in the linked data um, sphere. Her expertise lies in data transformation and remediation. Sa uh, Sasha Brazel is the catalog and metadata management librarian at Birmingham University in New York State. Their research includes the history of library classifications in America and linked data for cultural heritage institutions. And Crystal is the metadata librarian and co-interim head of the Metadata and Cataloging Initiative Unit at the University of Washington Libraries in Seattle. She focuses on the intersections of linked data, descriptive metadata practices, and entity management in GLAM. Ladies, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for the introduction and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sasha. I'm starting us out with this presentation today, and then you're going to hear from Mary and Crystal, and we'll be talking about the LCCN bot. So to get us started, I wanted to cover uh, two important pieces of this, which is what is Wikidata and what's the LCNAF? Mary, could you go next slide? All right, so I'm sure most of you know, um, but in case you're new, what is Wikidata? It is a knowledge graph. Um, and it currently has about 100 million items that represent a wide variety of entities. This is totally maintained by volunteers. Um, and what's important for us in, the, in this project is that it's a hub of external identifiers. So we can take a single person and get their identifiers from a lot of different vocabularies, put them in the same place, um, and make sure that we're all talking about the same person. This is kind of the glue that connects the Wikipedia language editions to one another. So no matter what language we're talking in, we all have decided and agreed we're talking about the same thing. Next slide. Here is an example, a very brief example of what a Wikidata item looks like. So we have the name up at the top. And what's important for this project is the identifier for the Library of Congress Authority ID. That is that N number that we're seeing on the slide. We also have a couple other little uh, pieces of information that we'll talk about later going on, but this is kind of what we're looking at for this project. Next. Okay, and what is the Library of Congress name authority file? In case you're not familiar, um, this is maintained by librarians through the Library of Congress. Um, there's kind of a higher barrier to entry. You have to be trained in order to do the work with the name authority file. We have about 11 million records and they cover authors, subjects, events, places, um, lots of nouns that we also use as identifiers. Uh, and this is what we use our, as identifiers in the library bibliographic records. So when we're looking at library records um, in library systems or your library catalog, we're using these name authority files uh, as the places where we are confirming identities. And this is an example name authority file record. So on the left-hand side, we kind of have our little um, field numbers, so we know what each of these fields mean. And for the case of this project, what we're interested in is that 024, and you'll see the QID, that's the Wikidata ID. We can see it's from Wikidata, and that's what um, we kind of focus on throughout this project. Hey, guess who is still muted? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Mary. Thank you so much, Sasha, for taking us through what is Wikidata and what is the LC name authority file. So last year, I worked with um, Stephen Folsom here at Cornell and Matt Miller at, L at Library of Congress to create LCCM bot. And so today I'm going to tell you about why we made it and a little bit about how it works. So 
I work at the Cornell University Library, and we use Wikidata to create knowledge panels in our catalog search results. And last year, I realized that while I'm really good about finding and creating Wikidata items for the name authority records I make, I'm terrible at remembering to add the LC identifier once I've uploaded the LC name authority record to the database. I knew that there was no way that I was the only one who has this problem. Um, so my supervisor, Stephen, put me in touch with Matt, and we created this bot together. Um, so basically, the bot is a script that runs every day at 9 o'clock Eastern. Um, LCCM bot makes the automated edits once the script has finished running. Basically, the script takes advantage of the Library of Congress activity streams um, to identify name authority records that had been updated the previous day. There's lots of links on this slide, and we have the slides and a PDF version of the slides on our SCED page, if that's easier for you. Um, and so you can click the links. Um, but basically, if a newly updated record has a 024, as Sasha pointed out on the previous slide, or a $670 U, which is a citation URL. Um, it uses that Wikidata identifier to add the authority ID and subject named as qualifier to the Wikidata item. All edits the bot makes, whether it actually makes them or it tries to make them but fails, um, are compiled into a report. And any of those unsuccessful edits where the bot tried to edit something but failed for whatever reason are resolved by volunteers. We'll get into what an unsuccessful edit looks like later. So if that verbal explanation was hard to follow, we also have a very nice diagram of the script logic. This diagram is available on the bot's GitHub. Um, but basically it starts with the activity stream up here the bot checks the LCCNs. If there's a QID in the 024 external identifier field or the 670 citation URL field, then it will check to see if the item already has an LC identifier and either add it if it doesn't have one or add the subject named as property if it already does. And if something goes wrong, then it adds it to the report. And I'm so happy to report that ever since the bot started running in February early this year, um, it has made more than 10,000 connections. Well done, LCCM bot. Um, we're all really pleased that the bot has helped to facilitate so many connections between Wikidata and the LC name authority file. And I hope that we can continue this work of maintaining the bot and the reports it creates for years to come. So. As I mentioned, when LCCM bot doesn't make an edit successfully, it's recorded on a report. This report is maintained by the five of us, um, Sasha Frizzell, Crystal Yagi, Kelly Davis, and Elizabeth Plunts. Um, the report maintenance team checks the reports that are generated each weekday. We kind of divided it up where each person has a day of the week that they're responsible for. Um, I usually do Mondays because I feel like that's when the bot, if there's an error with the bot, it seems to show up on a Monday and then I can talk to Matt about it and get it fixed before Tuesday. Um, now the screenshot is a little bit small, but you'll see um, a screenshot of the report on the right side of the screen. In it are several sections. So from the top down, um, needs review means that there is some kind of error on the Wikidata item, typically that an LC identifier is already on the item, and LCCM bot will not overwrite existing content. Um, VOF suggestion means that a cataloger put an 024 pointing to VOF in their NACO record, and so the bot would like us to double check that um, LC identifier before we add it to Wikidata. Um, we don't add the LCI identifiers based on the VOF alone because there is risk of conflation within VOF records, and we don't want to make the information ecosystem even messier. Um, add P244 means that an LCI identifier 
and a subject named as qualifier were successfully added to Wikidata. Yay! And there's no action required on anybody's part. Um, same thing for named as added. That means that there was already an LC identifier on there, um, and the bot improved it by adding the subject named as qualifier. So to recap, if you are a cataloger and you make name authority records, if you put in either a VF identifier or a Wikidata identifier in your new name authority records, the spot will automatically, in the case of a Wikidata identifier, semi-automatically with human review if you add a VF identifier to your 024 field. Let's talk a little bit more about those errors that come up. So the errors that LCCM bot reports typically fall into these four categories. First, an LC identifier already exists on the Wikidata item because there's a duplication. Um, this happens pretty regularly. I think since the bot started running, I've probably merged um, one pair of NACO records per month. So that's like six. Um, in other words, not only does, I don't know how many records everybody else has merged. This is just my data. Um, but in other words, not only does this work improve the connection between LCNAF and Wikidata, but it also improves the quality of LCNAF, just slightly, um, by, sur by surfacing duplicate records. Another common error is that there are intentionally two different LCNAF records. Crystal will get into this more in the modeling differences section, but typically we resolve these by adding the missing identifier and using the subject named as qualifier to differentiate them. Otherwise, Wikidata will throw an error. The third common error is that the identifier in Wikidata doesn't actually refer to the person in the Wikidata item. This happens sometimes when the identifiers in VF are imported into Wikidata without the user realizing there's a conflation. Maybe there's a um, script that they don't read in that VF cluster or something. Um, when this happens, we identify the correct item for this identifier to go on, sometimes creating new Wikidata items in the process and deprecating the incorrect identifier. Finally, um, sometimes we find that the identifier in the LCNAF record actually shouldn't point to this Wikidata item. This is pretty rare. I've only seen it happen twice. Um, but when it happens, we remove the incorrect identifier from the LCNAF record and replace it with the correct one. It's also good practice to check all the other identifiers in the LCNAF record, because if one identifier is pointing to the wrong person, it's entirely possible that the other identifiers are too. I'm going to pass the mic to Crystal, who is going to go into more depth on the challenges we've run into in the different ways that LCNAF and Wikidata model data. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks, Mary. All right. So the connections that this bot makes are um, really fantastic and really exciting. But the thing that gets me um, the most excitement about this bot um, are the errors that it surfaces and the things that it sort of um, knits together between different registries in the entity management universe um, and sort of our ecosystem of identity and entity management. And one of the challenges that we have met in um, sort of NACO and Wikidata um, identity management is modeling differences between the way that Wikidata represents um, corporate bodies and humans who change their names and the way that the LC name authority file does. And part of that is that Wikidata generally has one entity for each real world object, regardless of how that thing's name changes. Um, whereas the Library of Congress authority file is more of a traditional um name authority file, and it has a new authority record each time a thing's name changes, and we need to represent it bibliographically. So um, as Mary mentioned, 
uh, the LCCN bot participants resolve these data modeling inconsistencies by assigning multiple Library of Congress authority ID values to the corresponding Wikidata item. And we add a qualifier property of subject named as to each of these. And here's an example of that. I always use this particular um, labor union local as an example because um, they change their name a lot and they have been around for a long time, the region 37 of the ILWU in Seattle. Um, so we've got a question. Um, yes, uh, the multiple NACO records for different names do have data points that connect them and uh, that is within the NACO records. Um, so yeah, the, the University of Washington's Labor Archives of Washington, the labor union locals are actually really helpful examples of this because labor union locals change their names pretty frequently. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of other sort of, um, errors that have helped us out in our, um, ecosystem. Mary, if you want to switch to the next slide. Um, so another sort of happy error that we have found um, have been our viaf based suggestions. Um, we have had some problems arise in Wikidata based on our viaf data that the bot has helped us to surface. Um, we found sort of some patterns in our errors early on and we started tracking them and um, recording examples. So we found some improperly conflated identities in VIAF. So VIAF had been taking maybe two people with the same name. So maybe we had two Sasha Frizzells and one of them was a library and information scientist and maybe the other one was a um, was a author of, you know, maybe a creative writer and um, improperly conflating them under one identity. So that was one sort of error that we were sort of seeing over and over again. And then we also saw duplicate entities in BIAF throwing errors over and over again. Um, so we had two identities for, um, maybe there were two different crystal Yuragis and we know that there's only one of those in the world because Yuragi is a super weird name. Um, so we've got, you know, um, many, many duplicate entities in BIOF creating these errors in the bot. And so the bot was helping us notice errors that we definitely wouldn't have noticed on such a scale before. Um, we also noticed through the bot that um, errors were being ingested downstream by other entity management data aggregators, such as ISNI. So those ISNI identifiers from VIAF, maybe from an improperly merged um, or improperly conflated entity, were getting placed onto a Wikidata item um, when they shouldn't have been. So we were seeing some errors happen over and over again, and we started tracking them and then we, reported them to VIAF. Um, next slide, please, Mary. And OCLC was really thrilled to hear about these errors. And we talked with them in the spring of 2024 and their team promptly worked to investigate these errors um, and started working to improve their um, reconciliation software and the ways that they put entities together on their end. So we repair our problems on the Wikidata end, um, maybe deprecating improper identifiers like this. So we've got an example here where we've got a VIAF ID that was a duplicate entry. Um, and in Wikidata, you generally don't want to just delete things um, because they could be added back or maybe it could confuse people. Um, it's just not a good practice. So what you wanna do is deprecate. 
And then you put in a reason for deprecated rank and we'll say duplicate entry. And then we put in the preferred, um, the preferred identifier for the proper entry. Um, and then we assign, you know, a correct Wikidata item or new items when needed. Um, if there's some sort of a problem with, you know, which Wikidata item something is assigned to. Um, and then OCLC worked on the buy-off issues. Um, and it was a really cool cooperation. And it's sort of my favorite thing that's happened with the bot so far was the cooperation between registries um, and the improvement of the entire ecosystem that the bot helped to facilitate. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I think that was all for my slides. Yes. Okay, then I'll take it back from here. So we wanted to have this presentation um, because we were thinking about what our next steps would be and we really aren't very sure. Um, there's 11, 11 million records in NAF, but less than 1.6 million are in Wikidata. So how might we increase that number? Looking forward to people's ideas. If not, we will continue to think about this on our own, of course. Um, our next steps are also to continue talking with OCLC about those conflations in VF that are causing incorrect VF suggestions to show up on the report. Um, many thanks to Crystal for taking the lead on those conversations. And finally, we wanted to end with some questions that are on our mind. This is the part where we open it up for wider discussions, but we were wondering whether all bot maintainers have ways of cleaning up errors in this sort of human in the loop way. More generally, how can we create a more responsible editing community? Um, how might we shift from a mentality where all of us work separately at our own institutions to working together as a community to maintain these linked data ecosystems in a more organized fashion which then leads to our last question. For those of you who are active in the PCC, the Program for Cooperative Cataloging, you may have heard rumblings about the new entity management cooperative. Um, and we were also kind of wondering how that might play into the linked data maintenance work more generally. So those are our questions for you. And if you have any questions for us, we also have our eyes on the chat. Thank you. This was great. You guys have been answering most of them as they've been coming in. We do have a new one. <clears throat> There's a comment above it first, so I want to make sure I get it all. Timothy said, I guess one step to add more as NAF or NAF uh, entities into Wikidata would be to add more works and additions and various other creative works to the data. And then it says, do folks think LC hub IDs are right for adding to the data at a larger scale? You guys have thoughts on that one? I don't know if it's geared towards you, but you can answer it if you'll have ideas. The LC hub IDs added to Wikidata would be probably a Library of Congress question. I'm not sure what they would link to or what they would relate to in the Wikidata sphere. I think that's a good thing to learn. Okay, is the code for the bot available? It sounds like it is well designed and they want to collaborate with you. They want you to share. Yes, let me get the link for the GitHub. Yarmo yeah, put it in there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. When the presenters say, how can we shift from working separately to working together? You can share your bots. That's how we can we can work together. Let's go separately. Let's see. Most of the errors have been okay. So uh Alan said most of the errors have to be manually rectified. On average, how many errors were identified each week? 
That is a good question. I think that typically I see one or two per day. So let's say maybe five to 10 per week. So often there are days where no errors are reported. So realistically, maybe it's closer to five then. I would say on that set, is there ever a day when you like you go a whole week and there's no errors and all of a sudden you're like, is the bot working? Has something broke? Oh Have my gosh. That? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That has happened. Yeah. Especially because each of us take um, one day of the week. So sometimes there will be, I remember there was a one month stretch where I would open the report on Monday morning, right after the bot finished running and find that there was nothing to do. And this happened for like a month straight. The disadvantage of this um, spread out workflow is that it also took a little bit of time for us to notice that um, after a change to the VOF API, the VOF suggestion stopped working. So that is something that Matt is currently working on fixing for us. We still have time. So if anyone else has questions, get them in. I did have one follow-up question on that one. Absolutely. Um, so does the report show you like previous reports or can you access them when you log in? So, cause each of you are taking a day. So how would you know if it wasn't the day before unless you guys communicated? Um, Let me share the report screen. So I usually keep track because I know that October 7th is a Monday. Um, yeah, it shows the latest report at the very top of the list. So I just go for whatever's at the top. I'm not really keeping track of the date. I'm not sure how other folks are doing it given that say Wednesday is right in the middle of the week, but I assume that they are also popping over to latest. I have a this, Google Doc that just kind of like keeps track and links to every single one that I've ever done. Sorry, Sasha. Oh, no, no, that's that's a much better response. I just go there on Tuesday morning and I go, oh, latest, that's today. I'm going to click on that. So <laughs> use a little more high tech. Yeah, but there's no login required for any of this. So anybody can click on this and see what we're doing. If you if you somehow beat me or Sasha there first thing in the morning, um, you'll find a little red X here where it says need review. Um, and you could fix it for us. And then by the time we get to it, it'll have this little check mark here instead. Ah, Kelly says that she checks hers every other week or so. Fair enough. <clears throat> okay, so John Mark says, besides checking for duplicate NAFs, have you considered or found it useful to monitor Wikidata for changes that might alert authority maintainers to review the matched NAF records for updates they might want to make to them, e.g. significant changes in Wikidata labels or name property strings such as Klingman's dome to a uh, Early, or additions to a recent death date or an NT where the matching NAF heading has only the first date. I can uh -huh. Oh, you can go okay. ahead. Sorry. Um, so Wikidata information would potentially be able to be added in a 670, but it actually doesn't meet the criteria in the name authority file to be added to the actual access point, like the string that um, that identifies the thing. So I'm not sure how fruitful it would be to even add the information from Wikidata. Um, like if we had significant changes in Wikidata labels, we wouldn't be able to add those labels to 
um, even a variant access point in NACO without changing the rules for NACO. Yeah. Um, so I don't mm -hmm. know whether we would need to, uh, yeah. whether we would want to. Yeah, no, I I just know that sometimes they do change the the headings based on name changes, such as you know the name of that mountain. So I wasn't sure if like monitoring Wikidata for possible places where that might be called for might be helpful, or whether it would just be too much noise. Yeah, I do think it would be a lot to maintain, but the question of using Wikidata to to find recently added death dates and adding them to um, matching NAF headings is something that I've been thinking about. But even when I look at just recent deaths, um, for people who have a, um, sorry, words are hard. So I was looking at, um, entities marked as human that have both the National Di Diet Library of Japan and Library of Congress Name Authority Record Identifier. And I was wondering if I could use that to source updates from the National Diet Library to LCNAF, but it was just kind of an overwhelming amount. And also I suspect that there's someone else in the CJK ecosystem who's doing something similar without Wikidata as an intermediary. So it, it's definitely worth thinking about is what I'm trying to say. I also want to bring to your attention in case this is at all relevant to what you were asking about, um, John Mark, but there is another very similar report um, that basically shows where a the LCCM property has been filled in on Wikidata, but there's something wrong with it. Like this is clearly not an LC identifier. They don't start with HTTP. Um, but it also lets you know if um, if a new LC, if an LC identifier has been added to a new item and things like that. And I can put that in the chat for you as well. Okay, we have one more question. What do you do if the error is in the map? Then we fix it. <laughs> um, I think everyone on the team, except for Kelly, is fully NACO trained and has the ability to fix errors. And I think when Kelly spots an error, she works with Sasha, because Sasha's the best. Kelly says I send mine to Sasha. As I said, Sasha's the best. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing one. Bob said I once had a conversation with an LC person where I showed that the Wiki Daddy. Wikipedia article on John Latouche was more accurate than the LC heading. The result was the LC heading was changed. Nice. Um, and I'm, I'm sure they're more than willing to fix things if you point them out. Just makes it easier. Um, besides checking for duplicate maps, have you considered yes. or found it useful to monitor Wikidata for changes that might alert authority maintainers to review? I think we already did that one. I think I think we, did that. Just, we, we just did that one. Thanks. I think it might have just reposted down towards the bottom. Yeah, it's because hey. I put a link in reply to it. But okay. thank you so much, Ron. <laughs> hey, we're making sure every question gets answered here. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, Galen says they're very impressed and grateful for the work that you and the bot have undertaken. And that you guys have shared your bot. I think that's super cool. Mm -hmm. There was another comment about Bib Frame Hub ID properties. There's no question in that one. Okay. 
Okay. If anyone else has questions, make sure you put them in your chat or in Slack. This is a great, great presentation. I love that there's so many of y'all that worked on this together. <clears throat> yeah, we, I definitely think of this as a small community of people fixing bot reports. But that's also why we wanted to bring this to the larger community because many hands make light work and there are a lot of LC identifiers that are not in Wikidata yet. Okay, I'm currently not seeing any more questions. So if we are good, I think we can take a small break before we start the next one. That will be starting in about nine minutes. Um, thank you guys for a wonderful presentation. Well, thank you everyone for a wonderful presentation and for all these great questions. Let's keep the conversation going in Slack and in chat. If you have more questions, I'm sure they will still answer. Absolutely. Um, I am definitely on Slack all day today. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Thanks so much again for coming. And don't forget to add those O24s to your name authority records. <laughs> Thank you.